So what we're doing today, guys, we're going in here, and I wanted to touch on something with you. I think there's a huge myth in this industry, and in it, in it I, you know, I always say that it, it really handicaps a lot of folks because there's so much information out there, right? One of the things that you always remember, guys, if someone ever tries to talk you out of cutting uh, oaks out of your bedding area, right? There is some truth to that, but I think that hinders a lot of folks, and here's why. You always have to remember, when we go into a bedding area, so just a rundown right with you, uh, going into a bedding area, a doe bedding area, what I'm doing, any, any bedding creation, I'm going in taking the large timber out first. This one's kind of different because it's been high graded for years like we talked, big red oaks, but they're every you know, 50, 60 yards apart. We're leaving the ones that we can get 10 years from now that are only you know, 10, 15 yards, off, 20 yards off the food plot that's not going to crush a lot of stuff. We're, we're leaving those so we can get those in the future. Anything else internal, we're, we're, we're getting the big timber down, and then we're going in and we're doing a invasive extraction, right? And he's got plenty of it because it was high graded and it let so much other nasty stuff grow in here uh, for so long that all of this invasives now, black locust, yellow locust, uh, box elder, um, all that stuff that's in there, sage orange, is all big right it's like six eight ten inches perfect habitat stuff to get on the ground but what it's created is it's created a double canopy so where i'm going with that guys with the oaks the oaks are something to, to hew, a huge piece of the puzzle what you want to do is you want to go into these areas whether it's a quarter acre or two acres whatever it is that you're doing right you want to go in here and you want to find your what i refer to as keep trees right the keep trees i keep are white oak guys red oak are not what you want to label as your keep trees so first and foremost white oak pretty much only and what those are is that does rain a little bit of you know acorns from above so you you know the pockets are the uh, cubicles that i do in my doe bedding areas right so every 30 yards off your food plot go in and mulch a trail or hand clip a trail cut a trail in so you perforate them doe bedding areas right so you create the cubicles you want to find the best biggest healthiest looking white oaks through there now, if there's one, maybe two per cubicle, uh, you don't want 20 of them standing in here. The other ones, guys, this is where it comes in with this myth, right? The other, the other side of this is folks are going to tell you, oh, you can't cut oaks, and oh my God, you're ruining the timber. Remember this, guys. If you release 30% of your oaks, your non-desirable or your unvaluable you know, valuable oaks that you know are twisted and you're, you're they're never going to make a log anyway 30 years from now they're going to be pulped right i mean it's just uh they're they're tie material right there's no value in them what that is you get them on the ground you release 30 percent of the canopy those other standing oaks the first year will produce back 70 percent more than what they were giving you before so always remember that it's a 30 70 so when you hear me talk of 30 70 and that's a proven fact that's a mississippi state um, or Michigan State, they've all done research on that over the years, but anytime we can kick them in and supercharge them 70%, you'd be crazy not to do that, right? So we, by doing that, we're getting, you know, the oaks are producing from above, we're getting the browse to it, and you're in business. Always remember, that's kind of the step, right? Large, large trees out first, invasives next, then go in and make sure you've got your, you know, you keep trees, and then, because of your stand assemblage, what side of that doe bedding are you moving that line of travel past right so this one here guys we've got i'll show you uh one of these days i need to hire a cameraman right uh at the top of this ridge up here is another stand at the top of this bowl this draw and we've got more food that way another plot that way that we're going to do this afternoon and we've got doe bedding along the stretch because of that that's an am sit at the head of that draw up there we are sliding him past on the top so when the thermals are rising, it's coming out of the dough bedding and he's cruising around. We're making it good for us and good for him. So like I always say, guys, they're going to cruise the other side of this when you're not able to hear the hunting. They're going to cruise this on a PM when the winds, uh, the thermals are sinking down in there or where the wind is wrong for you. Don't build the back of it. They're going to use it. They're, they're going to find a way to scent check it. We want to build this. So we're sliding this off the edge of the food plot here about 30, 30 feet here because we don't have a lot of room 20, 30 feet. And we're going to slide a mulch trail right through here at the face of this. So we've got some edge feathering to do on the side of the plot because we got a sliding through. And then that stand assemblage, everything as in an in a AM stand up here, thermals coming out or up to the top. 
and uh, wind in your favor, wind in his favor. So remember that, guys. That's just a piece of the puzzle. I wanted to touch on that uh, with the oaks. That's a big deal. Remember, just because they're oaks doesn't mean that they need to be saved and, and they're the holy, you know, the gospel and you can't touch them. And, and oh my God, it's an oak tree. Don't cut it. That's probably one of the worst pieces of advice with habitat improvement that you could do. Now, like I said, there is some truth to that with the ones that you want to keep, right? So you have to know in these areas, guys, you're building this for long, the long term of these doe bedding areas. You're not looking to come back in here and cut timber out of these in five to 10 years. This one is a little bit different because they're easier to get. Most of the timber is gonna, big timber is gonna be out of these areas. So when you come back to, to log in 10 years, you're not destroying all this stuff. Uh, forester and sometimes a logger definitely a forester they'll tell you just the opposite don't don't cut don't do any hinge cutting in here because you're stealing the the health of the trees and and there's truth to that right as far as your tsi area if you're marketing for big beautiful boards per foot timber then yes don't do any hinge cutting in there relieve all the canopy underneath and just manage for the big beautiful timber but you better have a plan in place for when those trees 30 years from now like this one's you know 30 years down the road still isn't ready to cut for another 10 years but what is going to be under there to replace it that's the whole health of it that's the side that they are gauged on um, the money side of it we are getting our return on investment through that as well as hunting because a ho this whole thing is not going to be whitetail improved right uh the rim around we're going to have our access areas that's where your tsi happens guys not where you want to hold deer long term so just remember that we build this we're not coming back in here uh in, you know in five to ten years and cutting a bunch of timber out this one is a little bit different because they're on the edge right we're going to pull them out of here every 50 60 yards not even that probably 75 yards grab them out and not destroy what we're creating not much of what we're you know creating now and then we still have plenty of stuff to come back in and add and, and polish that up